Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the airbase in Belgium where Ukrainian pilots are trained for the F-16 on Tuesday. During the visit, Zelensky also met Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo where they signed a security pact on military aid to Ukraine, including the provision of 30 F-16 fighter jets by 2028. Zelensky's visit Belgium follows his with to Spain on Monday where he signed a security deal on provision of military aid worth 1.13 billion euros to Ukraine. It should be noted that Belgium was among the first countries to join the coalition established in the summer of 2023 to help strengthen Ukraine's air force against Russian offense. Last October, Belgium said that it would provide Ukraine with several F-16 fighter jets, without specifying a number, and help with the training for Ukrainian pilots in EU countries. Apart from Belgium, the Netherlands, Denmark, and Norway have also pledged to supply Ukraine with dozens of US-made fourth-generation jets. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky arrived in Madrid on May 27 where he is expected to sign a bilateral security agreement with Spain. Ukrainian leader said in a statement on Telegram earlier that he will discuss weapons supplies and training for Ukrainian soldiers in talks with Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. Arriving in Madrid's Barajas airport, Zelensky was welcomed by King Felipe. He later met Prime Minister Sanchez ahead of a joint press conference scheduled for later in the afternoon. Under the security deal that is due to be signed between the two countries, Spain will send Ukraine with 1.13 billion euros worth of weapons. El Pais newspaper reported on Monday that Madrid will commit to supply Ukraine with a dozen Patriot anti-aircraft missiles and 19 second-hand German-made Leopard 2A4 tanks, as well as other Spanish-made weapons such as anti-drone gear and ammunition. However, the thanks will need to be repaired, the newspaper added, citing unnamed sources close to the deal. The 12 missiles to be handed over to Ukraine do not include full missile defense systems, El Pais said. During the visit, Zelensky will also coordinate steps ahead of a June 15th to 16th summit meeting in Switzerland and meet with parliamentary leaders. Zelensky was expected to visit Spain earlier this month but he postponed all his foreign trips following Russian attacks in northeastern Kharkiv region. By banning Ukraine from attacking targets in Russia, Biden gave Putin a gift, the Sunday Times. By prohibiting Ukraine from attacking targets on the territory of the Russian Federation, US President Joe Biden made a gift to Russian ruler Vladimir Putin. Columnist Dominic Lawson writes about this in his material for the Sunday Times. He recalls that despite the fact that the head of the White House, insisting that he will do whatever is necessary to support Ukraine's attempt to repel Putin's army, refuses to allow Kyiv to use American weapons on or even over Russian territory. This policy has now proven fatal for the Ukrainians. Russian troops are destroying Kharkov, placing weapons right in the front of the border, and if they make further territorial gains, they will move to the second city of Ukraine into the range of their artillery. Then complete destruction will begin. 
However, Ukraine still does not allow the use of US weapon systems to attack warehouses and bases that devastate it, the author states. According to him, the point is not only that Washington demands from Kyiv guarantees that weapons provided by the West are not used in Russia itself. Most of these modern systems are geo-fenced. This means that a weapon's GPS can be programmed to prevent it from operating in a specific geographic area, in this case, the Russian territory. Denying Ukraine the ability to target the source of the attack on Kharkov and Ukrainian infrastructure in general defeats even the clear goal of US policy, which is that there should be some kind of negotiated peace agreement between Moscow and Kiev. Because Putin is not only not interested in any settlement that leaves Ukraine fully sovereign, the only thing that would motivate him to negotiate is the thought that he might actually be defeated militarily or at least fail to achieve what he wants through terror and bombing, writes Lawson.